Now, you are such a hero to so many. So I, I just kind of want to know what it felt like when those drug misuse allegations came out about your coach. Yeah. How did you feel? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's not a nice thing, but at the same time, you know, I've answered and, and answered everything that I can. And, mm. and, you know, it's not in my controls. There's nothing to do. But at the same time, you know, I've answered everything. Um, so at the minute, you know, I just want to carry and run in, enjoy what I do. And you know what drives me every day? Spending time with these kids, giving back to something to the community, to the kids and and taking part in competitions. That's, you know. Put all that to one side. For sure, yeah. Why did you feel you wanted to make a public announcement in that way? Um, because it took me a long time to mm. feel all right in my own skin. And I thought if I could help other people feel comfortable sooner, then you know, it'd be, it'd be an help. And how has it been? It's been manic. Um, <laughs> social media's gone mad. Um, I thought my phone was going to melt. Um, but, yeah, it's been really good. Some, some messages... There's a, a guy tweeted yesterday saying that because he'd read my story, he had courage to come out. So I'd like, I'll, if I've helped one guy, then... That's a good thing. Which is brilliant. Well, there's more than one. I mean, we've been looking at, you know, the reaction on Twitter. We've had so many comments in supportive this morning. But how hard was it for you thinking about that decision to speak about it publicly and, and you know, maybe fearing what reaction you might get? Yeah, um, it was tough, um, obviously, playing rugby and it's real masculine. It's, you know, having an image about being tough and everything. But... I thought that I could help break down maybe stereotypes that people have, perceptions that people have of, of gay guys. Um, I don't think I fit any of those stereotypes. So that was, that was my thinking behind it. And if the Queen were to be so bold as to arrive with her large sword, <laughs> tap you on the shoulder, arise Sir Andy? Um, I, I don't think you know until something like that happens, but it would obviously be... A, yeah, it would be amazing to be recognised like that for, for what I've done in tennis. I never expected to do any of the stuff that I have done. What do you think fatherhood is going to do to you? Obviously, my priorities change. Are you going to be a 3 a.m. nappy changer, Andy? Uh, yeah, I would, I'd imagine so, yeah. You're on camera, you realise that. Yeah, she is going to be watching this. <laughs> yeah, I know. I would imagine so. I'm taking the whole of uh, February off uh, from, from tennis. I'm not going to play until... Uh, Mark. So yeah. yeah, at the beginning, um, yeah, I'll be there for for everything, and yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, I'll throw everything into it for sure. You experienced bipolar disorder. And yes, you, I experienced and, bipolar and disorder. And you admitted yourself to hospital. Yes, I admitted myself to hospital because I was um, I hit the brick wall like with training. But at the end of the day, I don't think that they are filling you with medication because I took the medication the other day and I've never taken nothing that. I laid on the couch, got up, and I fell down and nearly cracked my ribs of the powerful medication that they're giving me. I had five stitches in my head when, the, um, when they gave me the medication. Frank, when you're going through a, a, a down yeah. time, right, when right. you're feeling depressed and yeah. you're feeling lonely, whatever it is, what, what normally triggers that? I mean, do you have any warning? Um, do you suddenly... I don't think you have no warning. Some days women go through all different periods and different things through their life, so a woman is no different than a man. Some days you can get up, the sun can shine. Some days it's raining. And when it's, Every... when it's raining for you, yeah. we only know you really as this happy-go-lucky, yeah. big-laughing champ, right? Yes, not when every it's... day you can be happy, not every day you can be sad. Right, so Some when, days when we it... all go through it. We have different problems, right. bills to pay, relation breaks up. Um, kids you've got to look after of a different marriage or whatever, we all go through it. So it's not only me what goes through it. No, no, you go through it. You can't say that you don't have good days or bad days. I don't, but I've, I've, I've never felt the need, for example, to seek you know, mental health treatment or yeah. go into somewhere where I can actually stay and be Peers. treated. So I, I'm curious... Got a record, a man, a man in the mirror, everybody goes through um, ups and downs well, and good and bad. Here's my question, Frank. What, what goes through your mind when you're going through one of those downs? A lot down, of things go through downtown. your mind. Sometimes it's all cloudy and heavy and sluggish and can't motivate yourself. But sometimes in the winter, people are more unhappy than they are in the summer. The sun is a tonic and it gives you a boost and whatever, but we all go through it. So and by the way, <laughs> best, best, best suit and tie combination right, we've had Mark, on the man, Sorry, Mark, thank you. <laughs> Christmas, Father Christmas. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> From ha, ha, ha. You're the best Father <laughs> Christmas out there. <laughs> oh, oh, do ho, ho, ho again. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> we heard Victoria say the other day that when Harper told 
told her that she wants to play football, it was like a dagger <laughs> to the heart. Was it completely different for you? Here? Uh, oh, it was the best thing I'd ever heard. It was the best thing I ever, ever heard. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think it was. And obviously, I bought her football kits over the years as well. And soon she comes down and says, Mummy, look. Playing football the other day, and she had, like, a really pretty dress on and then a pair of pink, pink football boots, um, which I then sent Victoria the video. So, again, you know, I think that was also a, a dagger in her heart. But uh, Oh, but you don't mind. I love it's, it. It's what I you love want. It. I love it. She, but Victoria's like, please, just let me have... You know, we've had... We've got four children. Three of them are boys. All love football. Please just let me have one. That Do the kids like watching you act as opposed to watching you play? They much rather watch me on the field, but I think they enjoy when I go and do cameos and when I do certain things. We've seen the video clip from towards the end of the fight where Chris Eubank Sr. Mm. is seen telling his son, stop hitting him in the head. It was taken to mean that he could see what was happening mm. here. The referee mm. was criticised for not jumping in mm. and that he was genuinely worried for your safety. Was that not a good thing by Chris Eubank Sr.? No, it was, if, if anyone in boxing knows, it's more of a tactical thing. You know, it's more of a tactical thing. Um, he couldn't stop me to the head, so he wanted to hit me into the body to try and get rid of me. When he says about he had a lot of pressure to do the press, con the press conference, you know, all he could have done is put a one-liner out there and just said, we've been told by the Blackwell family that we, they don't want us to do a press conference, and when he wakes up, then we'll do a press conference. That's all he had to say. Are you surprised by what Nick Blackwell is saying, calling you guys inhuman, hammering you for what you've been doing since that fight? Um, I was shocked. I was shocked when I first heard uh, the things he'd been saying because we'd been, we'd had a little uh, a talk on, on, on social media, on Twitter, and he kind of said everything was okay and, um, you know, that we, there was no hard feelings. But, um, you know, the truth is, uh, you know, I ended the guy's career. I, I, you know, I've stopped him from being able to make a living. Um, and how do you feel about that? Uh, well, you know, this is this is the thing. You know, uh, I mean, even yesterday I heard for the first time that he he's in an ambulance and um, you know he actually died and had to be revived on the way to the hospital. So you know, this it's, it's, it's serious. Mm. Um, and you know, obviously, was it intentional? No. To, was it, did I did I want any of this to happen? Of course not. But um, you know, I guess I can I guess I can understand where this um, anger and, and dislike for me c could, could come he, from. He says, Chris, that he was particularly annoyed that you went out partying the night that you not won true. the fight. Not, not true. true? Not true, 100% not true. What um, did you do that night? I went back to my hotel room. I had, I had a meal with the family and friends and uh, I went to sleep. So he's just wrong about that? Uh, I don't know where he's getting his news from, but that is... Uh, did that's you go false. out partying in the next few days? Um, not that I can remember. I mean, I, I saw friends, obviously, you know, people wanted to see me and congratulate me. His argument was, look, while he's in a coma, you were out celebrating. Does he have any validity to that point? Not at all. I, you know, I actually waited until... Um, my, my plan was to go to New York straight after the fight to celebrate. I postponed that trip um, right, right up until I, I found out that he was OK, that he was awake. The statistics around mental health can be misleading because it says one in four, so there'll be three in four who think that it doesn't pertain to them. But you, you hear from their stories how important that third person was in the scenario, you know, how important it is for someone from the outside to have permission to identify and, and, and just say, you know, just as easily as you would say, oh, you've got the sniffles, or, you know, you've got the you're coming down with the flu or something, mm. just to say, you, you're a bit down today, you know, you don't seem yourself, is everything OK? That open question that allows people to give that response. Mm. And uh, fantastic that they get that support. Not everybody has the mm. ability to ask for that support, even if that support is there. You um, have been very open about your battle with depression, Clark, mm. and we know that you, know, you did, you know, the, the worst thing you tried to take your own life it was yeah. it was a terrible terrible time for you but presumably there were people there who would have said to you but why didn't you talk to me about it was it because mm. you felt that you couldn't ask for that help what what was it that led to that dark time well in my case it's because my depressive episode was so severe i was beyond redemption you know it, 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 it had such a grip of me that my thoughts and my perceived reality were that suicide was the logical, rational, best thing 
for all concerned and uh, and that's the power of the illness that's why it is you know it is so important that we talk about it but one thing that I do think is important we get across today my story my experience we're talking about the end of a spectrum everybody has mental health everybody mm. and just like some days like I said you have the sniffles there are other days when you seriously hurt yourself you need to go to the hospital that mental health is the same there are some days where you you're down you're feeling you know a bit mm. low and oh, you might only need a coffee and a chat with someone but there are other days where you get to the point where I did where you do need medical attention and hospitalization yeah. this is for four in four people yeah. not one in four when you're a <laughs> supremely gifted athlete at the top of your game Surely, in the modern climate, the one thing you are most careful about is what goes into your body. 100%. Like everything, even if I just had a headache and I wanted to go to the pharmacy and take something, I'd go on Global Dro, I'd check absolutely everything. Like I was so efficient with that sort of stuff. I just didn't ever want to be caught out for something that wasn't my fault. And we heard <laughs> that uh, from Maria Sharapova mm. that, you know, she, she took responsibility, it was a mistake but she had been taking meldonium for 10 years and then they changed the rules. Now, presumably they change the rules and update the list quite yeah. often, but you're given three months notice and then when the rules come in, you want to make sure that you're not taking that anymore. Do you have other people around you checking? Of Do, course. When that notification comes through that the rules have been changed, is it clear that you get it? Yeah, like obviously you get the letter and like she said, she just obviously didn't read the list properly. It must be very disheartening if you're at the top of your game to see so many sportsmen get done for drug cheating. Completely. I just did absolutely everything to guarantee that that was never going to happen to me. I got drug tested at least once a month throughout my whole entire career. I saved absolutely everything because I just want to be able to say if anyone even questions me, go, no, here you go, here's everything. I did blood profiling on top of that. I knew absolutely everything I was taking. I checked everything. What do you think of drug cheats? I, I, it's sad. It's also very hard as an athlete to be able to stand up next to someone and think, I can't beat them because they've taken drugs. Can you think That's back to worst. people that you were swimming against? No, luckily for me, not in my event, but definitely amongst the swimming world, there mm. definitely is. And I think that's so disheartening that it's already some people that have to stand up against Michael Phelps and already mm. know that you're going to lose, let alone again, then a drug cheat on top of that. Mm. You want to be able to stand on the block and think it's possible for me to get a medal here. Whereas if you don't think that up against a drug that is extremely hard. Eddie the Eagle Edwards is here. Very good morning to you. Thank you. Um, look, just tell us, you know, why was this your dream? And, and, and how did you turn it into a reality? And how did you deal with the reaction, which frankly wasn't always positive, Eddie? It wasn't always positive. Now, it's been a dream since I was about eight years old. I used to watch athletics and things on television, and I thought how cool it, was, it must be for a guy to be so good at their sport that they wear a Great Britain tracksuit. And I thought that was brilliant. No funding. No funding. Very little training. Very little terrible training. Terrible eyesight. Your yes. glasses used to mist up mid-jump. I didn't have a lot going for me, really. <laughs> <laughs> Against all the odds, Eddie, and endurance, and that's what certainly comes out in the film. Yes. Has it been interesting for you to sort of relive that time in your life? Because it was such an extraordinary time, but the endeavour... Because what I think what the film doesn't necessarily portray is actually how hard you had to work. Yes. You know, the, you're certainly the, the character in the film, mm -hmm. I think you've said to me, it's about 50% life, real life, 50% yeah, sort of more, Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't necessarily depict just how hard you had to work to become a ski jumper. It was, and I, I, I think that's the greatest thing with the film, that it'll, it'll open people's eyes. I think what I love as well is the performance by Taron Edgerton, who plays oh, you. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is, this is, a, this is, Taron was in The Kingsman, this is a James yeah. Bond yeah. Taron. Uh, I mean, let's say we can see, you. there you go, that's him on the, that's him in Kingsman, and that's him on the left being you, with the moustache. What did you make of his performance? He was amazing. I went to Garmisch to go on set uh, to see a couple of the scenes, and I saw him dressed as me, and it was like looking in the mirror <laughs> 28 years ago. He had the moustache, the jaw, the hairstyle, the helmet, the goggles, everything. And I went, oh, my God, yeah. it's me. Fantastic. And they did such a good job with casting, and, uh, and, and the performance was fantastic.